example they are prokaryotic cells right now while cells of advanced animals animals having high order in them they will be having eukaryotic cells for example animals plants right now okay so we did discuss these things as well and then we talked about the different type of organelles found inside the cell so just like our body are having different organs similarly there will be certain organs in floating in the cytoplasm in a cell those are called as cell organelles and this plasma membrane that is a magnified view of it so here you can see that materials are passing across it but it will allow only certain materials to pass through can you tell me name of some of those materials which the plasma membrane will allow to pass through it yes abu sir the cytop the the chloroplast no no i am talking about the plasma membrane this is the cell membrane or the plasma membrane both are same thing it will allow certain materials to pass across its walls it will allow certain material to pass for example it will allow oxygen food or waste to pass across it right now that's what i'm asking okay now yes hmm. so cell uh, this uh, uh, cell membrane or the plasma membrane it what are the functions of it it is the outermost boundary in the animal cell as you said and it is controlling the movement of substances inside and outside of the cell right now further you get to see that this cell membrane is also separating the cell from the external environment right now and cell membrane will be present in almost all the cells right so first i will be asking some questions to you then we will be proceeding further we will today we will be continuing from the mitochondria okay now hmm. so i believe you might have revised things so based on that i'm asking a few questions to you what functions are performed by cell membrane <coughs> also called as <laughs> plasma membrane good ha uh, first of the function is that what is the first function of the cell membrane protect the cell very good protects the cell second uh Uh, sir, uh, hmm. um, allows the food hmm. to pass through it. Very good. So it allows not just food. Apart from food, there are several other things also. It will allow movement of oxygen or carbon dioxide also, right? No. So it allows, and we should say that it will control the movement also. So allows and controls. the movement <laughs> of food oxygen of waste materials okay and one more thing it's separating the cell from the outer environment right now separate cell from external environment can you think of some other points we know that when you look at this diagram now here you can see that it is porous in nature p o r o u s porous porous means having holes okay now so there are holes in in the membrane getting it now abu so one other characteristics we can uh, uh, say that cell membrane are porous in nature porous in nature right now okay any other uh, points in it i guess no okay no hmm. talking about cell wall yes it also uh, 
like so it keeps uh, like for us mm -hmm. uh, with the help of bones we have a structure and because of the cell membrane it uh, the uh, cell has uh, a structure mm ha -hmm. exactly exactly in that manner also we can look at it that it is uh, giving a structure also right now it is holding all the insides of the cells together and thereby providing it a specified structure and and protecting it also so since it is keeping all the insides of the cells together so that it does not spill out and the cell does not die so thereby it is um, providing a structure to it also uh, so we can uh, count that one also so sir uh, mm -hmm. uh, that also that uh, um uh, the cell wall is the outer most part mm -hmm. so it also helps uh, in the uh, uh, the signal and communication uh, in that manner also we can study this ke that there are so many blood capillaries are attached on the uh, uh, cell so see if you were to talk about animal cells so when we talk about blood vessels so blood vessels are namely of three types you have veins you have artery veins that carries the polluted blood i mean to say that is having carbon dioxide in it artery carries oxygenated blood oxygen carbon dioxide while there is one more veins that is called as one more type of vein uh, uh blood vessels that is called as capillaries so capillaries are smaller than the veins and the arteries and capillaries are actually attached to the cells right now so capillaries will be bringing all the materials required by the cells also it will be carrying the signals as well okay na <laughs> so that should also be counted over here you're yes, talking about cell wall what are the functions of the cell wall and what are some of its characteristics first of all it will be found only in plant cell plant cells apart from uh, in plant cells uh, we will be also counting fungus also in fungus cells also it is found and in most of the bacteria is also cell walls are present okay what else we did talked about cell wall <coughs> it also helps in uh, of protecting the cell very good protects the cell okay what is it made up of uh, it is made up of uh... it starts from c it is uh... made up of cellulose okay now remember the name okay it is you fill it it is rigid now right okay now second thing that it will be protecting the plant from uh bad weathers from harsh weather conditions right now so it protects plants from bad and harsh weathers right now so these are the functions of the cell wall okay then we did talked about cytoplasm also what were the different points we did talked about cytoplasm Yes, sir. Different things we did talked about cytoplasm, like it's a jelly-like substance. 
Yes. It's a jelly-like fluid. Okay, where it, will it be found? It's like uh, it is inside the cell. Yeah. Uh, inside yeah. the cell. Hmm? And uh, it uh, it uh, yes. holds the it holds the holds all the uh, cell things. organelles. Cell, yeah. Hmm. Right uh, hmm. Yes, and see, so cytoplasm was a basically a jelly like structure that is present in between the nucleus and the cell membrane. It is found over here, right? In center, you have got the nucleus, right? Further, we get to see that. All of the chemical reactions that will be taking place inside the cell will be happening. Most of the uh, chemical reactions will be happening in the cytoplasm. Okay, no? Like when we talk about uh, plant cells, right? So, for example, the photosynthesis will be happening in the plastids, and plastids are where? Plastids are here in this. They are floating in this cytoplasm. If you were to talk about digestion of food, digestion of food will also be taking place in this. In the cytoplasm only. All right, no? Also, different cell organelles are floating in it. Right, Abu. So, it is site for chemical reactions. Second thing, cell organelles are floating in it. Are floating in it. Hope you got this. Okay, if you remember, we did talked about uh, some other cell organelles, like we did talked about nucleus, vacuole, plastid. So tell me about these three cell organelles as well. Talking about nucleus, what were the things we studied about it? It is the brain of the cell. Very good. Without it, uh, the the uh, the cell will die. Without it, cell will die. Very good. It is very important. Okay. Um, what does it consist of? Nucleus. <laughs> DNA. It consists of a hereditary material. Okay, no? That is, you see it? DNA. Very good. That is hereditary. Okay, next thing you get to see that in the cell, whatever informations are required by the cell to perform any type of activities, whether the cell is a uh, cell has to do respiration, or whether the cell has to grow, whether the cell has to do some repair work, okay, now whether the cell has to grow and divide, okay, now, or even if the cell has to die, all the informations are passed by the nucleus okay now so that is the thing we did talk about and nucleus is also having one more structure in it that is also looks that also looks like a dot like a structure that we call as <coughs> yes Abu, remember the name hello if you look at this diagram in this, we saw this one more structure found inside the nucleus that we call as nucleolus. Yes. Okay, no? so that thing also we did talked about it. So all different activities inside the cells are basically being controlled by the nucleus. And then you get to see that uh, the cell diagram which I showed you here, that is a eukaryotic cell. That is a eukaryotic cell as I told you. That's why you are able to see a very clear picture of the nucleus, right now. If it were to be a prokaryotic cell, the nucleus will look like this. It will not have a clear boundary. Okay, no? that is the thing about it. And then do, uh, uh, do tell me about this, uh, this one more thing uh, about plastids. Remember we did talked about this. Yes, 
some plant and uh, plants yes uh, the it is the store for the it is the store of the, the cell uh, like uh, the things that uh, the cell doesn't need uh, goes in no no now you are not defining vacuoles you are talking about vacuoles vacuoles are like the store rooms that will be like in the cell it will be storing water or food and it will be storing waste materials also remember i told you like it will be uh, storing all the extra materials that is there in the cell and if there is unwanted substances that will also be stored in the in the vacuoles okay now talking about plastics this the yes uh, sir the uh, uh this is the like the Mm -hmm. organelle that uh, uh, does uh, photosynthesis exactly inside this organelle you have the chloroplast and chloroplast consists of chlorophyll right now so there photosynthesis is happening so we did talked about this that these are found in the cytoplasm of only plant cells in only plant cells we will get to see that right so their work is to <laughs> provide color to the uh, color to a uh, parts of plants but apart from providing color it also consists of different type of pig plastids uh, so, uh, i mean to say the, it consists of pigments also right now so for example talking about chloroplast chloroplast is the plastid that consists of chlorophyll okay na? and chlorophyll is basically the green pigment which is helping in the process of photosynthesis right now so that's what we talked uh, we talked about plastid in the previous class talking about vacuoles so we did talked about vacuoles also so what are vacuoles what are their function yes <clears throat> those are the uh, store of the hmm. uh cell Ha, uh, basically, their function is for uh, to store the different type of substances, right? Or also, if some substances are, uh, basically, waste now, if something dies in the cell, if some cell organelle is uh dead, for example, so that will go inside this vacuole. So vacuole will consist of different type of things in it. It it will be storing food. It will store water, and it will store different type of disposable things as well for the cell disposable substances will also be here okay also do tell me one more thing in which cell in the plant cell or in the in the animal cell the size of the vacuoles will be larger <laughs> plants in the plant cells okay talking animals, about uh it it would be small but then there would be many many vacuoles exactly very good okay now also do tell me one more thing the position of the nucleus in the animal cell will be where will it be in the center or at the side for the uh, plant cell hmm. uh, for the plant cell it would be on the side and for the animal cell it would be in the center very good okay now let's do talk about mitochondria which is also called as powerhouse of the cell okay now which is called as powerhouse of the cell so mitochondria as you can see in the image here these are oval shaped cell organelles and this will be found in most of the eukaryotic cells it can be found right now now the question why it is called as powerhouse of the cell the because answer it, lies mm -hmm. because uh, it uh, generates uh, energy exactly exactly and mm -hmm. continue that uh, uh, like uh, produces power it produces a power ha huh, see so see over here that in the mitochondria you get to see that it is that place inside the cell where respiration takes place remember the respiration is the process 
where food is broken down to obtain energy right now so all the food that goes inside the cell okay that will actually go to the mitochondria where respiration will take place so thereby in respiration in the mitochondria see what happens in this respiration will happen that is called as cellular respiration so in cellular respiration of what happens now the glucose glucose is a food right now glucose is found in the food so glucose will now be converted in the presence of oxygen into energy and energy will be released in the form of certain molecules jise hum atp kehte hain atp so see over here that in the presence of oxygen the food is broken down and thereby energy is released carbon dioxide is also released and then heat is also released you get it. <laughs> getting this thing or not yes sir hmm. so in the process uh, food which consist of glucose will be broken down in the presence of oxygen to release some energy in the form of atp molecules i will be explaining this atp molecule also don't worry molecules carbon dioxide is also released and some amount of heat is also released right okay now atp is what atp also we call it as adenosine triphosphate that is the name of this molecule adenosine triphosphate so atp is basically what atp will further break down and then thereby energy will be released actually, actually. <laughs> but you don't need to study in that much detail just know that energy is being released here in the form of atp molecules if someone asks uh, energy release in the respiration in mitochondria is it released in what form so you can answer it is at least in atp atp is the molecule basically now mitochondria can be seen in significant numbers in the cells right now so mitochondria are uh, mostly it will be found in plentiful numbers in cells that requires significant amount of energy to function for example like the muscle cells cells of muscle requires more energy as compared to the cells found in the hair right now bo or for example uh, cells of liver right now the cells of liver will require more energy so thereby uh, those cells found in the liver will be having more number of mitochondria right now so we just studied that it is granular and cylindrical in shape look at the shape of this right a granular and cylindrical shape they are found in cells of all organisms and it plays an important role to run respiration process in animals and also stores energy hence mitochondria is also called as powerhouse of the cell another thing i did told that they are found in plentiful number in cells that require <laughs> more energy for example liver cells and one more i did give an example of liver cells and then muscle cells okay so hope it is clear again okay, this di diagram shows that there will be dna is found in the mitochondria also okay now normally we know that dna is found in the nucleus right now but then in higher classes we will get to know that dna is found in the mitochondria as well okay if there is any question any confusion in it please do let me know yes sir bo sir no question okay has there been in any other cell organelles which uh, you have been taught in the school please to let me know sir we have only studied one 
only one which one sir we have only studied about nucleus and uh, then we have we haven't studied anything about the other okay okay so the chapter is still going on or is it finished it it is finished okay so it means like you have studied these as extra okay no yeah okay okay no worries but that will be helping you in your future classes okay no hmm. now moving ahead there are few other important things you need to know here like what were the differences let's uh, summarize the difference which we studied between the uh, animal cells and plant cells earlier so generally shape of the cell is rectangular talking about the plant cells it is evident from the fact when you look at the shape here that is a plant cell and having a rectangular shape right now now talking about animal cell it is generally circular flat or oval and that is evident from the fact look at this cell over here that is an animal cell okay nabu look at this cell this is also an animal cell further if you were to look at these cells also see all these are animal cells right now having or oval shape circular shape or elongated shape only skin cells are some ex uh, exceptions here that are having a rectangular shape hmm. further you get to see that in plant cells outer most part of of the cell is called as cell wall while in animal cells cell walls will be absent so the outer most part in the animal cell will be <coughs> the outermost part in the plant cells uh, sorry in the animal cells that is plasma membrane now you getting my question or not talking about plastids plastids will be present in the uh, plant cell but will it be present in the animal cell no obviously no because animal cells can't carry out photosynthesis hence they do not have plastids plant cell we did talk vacuole will be bigger in size okay now and uh, in animal cells we did talk vacuole is smaller but more in number right uh, these things you don't need to know what are centrosomes right now okay now talking about the comparison between the number of mitochondria in comparison to animal cells fewer mitochondria are found in the plant cells while in animal cell they are more obviously because of the reason that animal cells requires more energy so hope the difference is clear if is there any question in that uh, sir uh, do we have uh, sir the uh, like uh, what mm -hmm. cell do we have we humans <clears throat> will you please uh, elaborate the question uh, sir like uh, we have thought, uh, thought about the hmm. uh, the plant cell and animal cell so what cell like we uh, we humans have we obviously have the animal cell type obviously we have the animal cell in our body and cells of different organs in our body are different from each other the only difference lies in their structure and somewhat the function that they perform but the general composition the general cell organelles which we saw will be found in almost all the cells of different organs in our body like whether you take the cells of the stomach or whether you take the cells of the brain both of them will be having a nucleus both of them will be having a plasma membrane cytoplasm mitochondria okay now lysosome centrosomes etc So the uh, I hope uh, you are getting the uh, point I'm trying to make. Yes. Or, or is the question uh, else, or do we have any other question? No. Okay. Okay. So human body. When you study about human body, human body is composed of trillions of cells. Human body consists of trillions of cells. Just uh, uh, five hundred trillion. Uh... 500 trillion cells so imagine the number of cells uh, that is there in the human body further you will get to know that 
ह्यूमन बॉडी कंसिस्ट ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ सेल्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर विल बी नर्व सेल्स देर विल बी मसल सेल्स ओके ना देर विल बी ब्लड सेल्स विच आर सर्कुलर इन शेप सो वेन यू स्टडी अबाउट रेड ब्लड सेल्स or the white blood cells you must have heard of this these are different cells found floating in the blood <coughs> they are all circular in shape okay na no? spherical in shape sperm cell that is having a oval head and having a tail like shape all right now so hope you are getting these things so generally cells will be found of different shapes in the human body the longest cell in the human body know that these are the nerve cells nerve cells which we also call as neuron okay which we also call as neuron okay if we imagine that in the whole world uh, which is the smallest cell in the world have you thought of like which is the smallest cell in the world sir blood cells no in world i know about in the whole world which are the uh, smallest cells they are the mycoplasma gallia septicum know the name mycoplasma <laughs> gallia septicum and they are having a size of remember i did told you about micrometer so they are having a size only of 0.2 to 0.3 uh, micrometer getting it abu yes sir okay and then talking about like uh, largest cell it is the ostrich uh, egg cell exactly these are the ostrich egg cells right now okay very good <laughs> largest ostrich egg I hope that is clear. Now, if you were to talk about like the sperm cell and the ovum cell, so sperm cells are released by male, while the ovum cells are released by the female body. So do know that thing as well. Okay, now uh, have a look at this person. Any guesses who is this? Like, you know about Robert Hooke, Anton von Leeuwen, or Hawk? So the person in the image here is the. Anton von Leeuwenhoek. Okay, now so he was a microbiologist. He was a Dutch microbiologist, right? So also he developed the first uh, microscope. Okay, now in order to develop the microscope, uh, uh, discovered, uh, developed, kiya tha basically. So he was a Dutch microbiologist. and the name is anton von leeuwenhoek he has also been called as father of my microbiology microbiology like in biology you have different fields like you have zoology you have uh, botany you have odontology right now there are different branches in biology where you will be studying uh, like in botany you will be studying about plant life in zoology you will be uh, sorry in uh, zoology you will be uh, ha, uh, in botany you will be studying about plant life in zoology you will be studying about animal life in odontology you will be studying about bones similarly there is a field in biology called as microbiology where you study about microorganisms right no? also he was one of the first microscopist he was also first microscopist microscopists are the persons who developed microscope all right nabu okay this much is clear or not now the question comes at why we are studying him because he had so many contributions in the field of microbiology he developed protista is not developed i mean to say discovered so he discovered the bacteria for the first time okay no discovered bacteria and then there is another group of microorganism just know its name you don't need to study that 
write down in detail protista so bacteria and protistas were first discovered by whom so the answer is the father of microbiology that is anton von leeuwenhoek okay no okay is there any other question in it yes no sir okay also know that he was one of the first person to have discovered to have developed microscope okay no so in the year 1666 somewhere around that area uh, that uh, era he uh, uh, developed the microscope okay no so while his visit to the uh, to london in 1666 he was from dutch when he visited to london in the year 1666 now so there by he became very much interested in the field of microscopy so while he was returning to his home he started to make simple microscopes right now so he started to make simple microscopes and then thereby eventually he led to develop microscopes which look like this here you can see he is holding this microscope in his hand and looking at the candle flame or not the candle flame he must have taken some sample in it and thereby looking at the uh, looking at it using the light coming from the candle okay further have a look at this question and this question the organel that controls all activities in a cell what do we call that nucleus that is nucleus next one uh sir the blood cells blood cells very good blood cells or particularly we can quote example of red blood cells okay now red blood cells in short you write it as capital r b c and the small s like this name the scientist who invented the first microscope hmm um. Yes, moments ago we were talking about the same scientist. Yes, Abu. Moments ago we were talked about him. Like just few seconds ago we talked about him. Sir, I forgot his name. His name was Anton von Leeuwenhoek. Okay. I try to remember the name. Who coined the term cell? <laughs> Sir, I do not understand the question. Coined means when when someone gives name to something for the first time. So thereby says that he coined the term. Okay, now. So for example, if I were to give give a word for the first time to the word. Uh, the that person is... uh, developed, uh, I, I mean, the, uh, like discovered cell. Ha! Huh, exactly, he was the same person who discovered cell. Uh, Robert Hook. Robert Hook, very good. Okay, do you recall the year? In which year? Uh, uh, yeah. to, uh 18 no not 18 it was developed very early than 18 1665 remember that okay no 1665 in that year okay a plant cell wall is mainly composed of what protein cellulose lipid or starch Yes. Cellulose. Cellulose. Very good. 
okay <clears throat> now one more thing uh, you need to know that this anton von leuven hook was the same person no that he discovered he was the first person to have discovered free living cells when we talk about uh, robert hook robert hook discovered dead cells of the cork right now when he discovered cells he saw that there was no movement in the cells so thereby he concluded that uh, there is no movement seen inside the cell right now abu but then when anton von leeuwenhoek uh, when he discovered free living cells in pond water so he took some sample of pond water and there he discovered free living cells meaning alive cells so those free living cells were actually of alga those were algae algae you know what is algae yes sir right now on water it you might have seen it floats on water right sir, now on green ground. on ground also on moist areas also it can be seen it grows after some time right now very good so in the year 1674 he discovered free living cells so he basically took some sample from pond water and then thereby he discovered it right he also invented the compound microscope which we discussed about right now okay apart from having discovered bacteria and protista he also studied and saw the red blood cells and the sperms sperm cells for the first time okay no so he observed other cells apart from bacteria and protist also so the answer to this question obviously will be what then this one read the question <coughs> basically there should be a blank over here anton von leeuwenhoek anton von leeuwenhoek so that was the person great no the next thing in the chapter we will be talking about how does cell divide okay now how cell divides so understand that there are two types of cell division the cell will be dividing in two ways one of the ways in which cell divides first of all like if i were to ask like why cell divides why the cell will divide so that the cell can grow right now so that the to reproduce very good right now so so a baby becomes an adult a baby becomes an adult because of cell division now getting it now so because of cell division so for growth it is required now what happens like if someone develops uh, someone is injured so wound is there in the body part of the person so thereby in order to heal that cell division is required now you will see like if a tissue here is damaged or if the skin here is burnt after some time the skin heals itself right now, a new layer of skin develops over it right now so thereby for repair also uh, cell will be dividing another thing is that as you said for reproduction also to reproduce also <coughs> cells will be dividing so the there are two ways in which cell will be dividing one of the ways is called as mitosis mitosis second way in which cell divides that is called as meiosis have you studied about these have you been to uh, uh, teach about these things in the school yes abu Uh, sir what mitosis and meiosis no the teacher didn't um, uh, taught you about these things no okay so look just understand this thing that i will be keeping it very simple for you see basically when you talk about um mitosis now so there will be a cell okay this is a cell that we call as parent cell so this parent cell will divide into two cells this will simply split into two cells which we call as daughter cells so there is one parent cell and it splits into two cells and now these cells are called as daughter cells yes sir uh, uh, the teacher mm -hmm. had 
the teacher has told no uh, that's what i'm saying here so <laughs> mitosis is, mitosis is the very uh, fundamental type of cell division that is required for life so during mitosis you get to see that a cell basically duplicates all of its contents it will duplicate all of its content how do we uh, say like for example see for example uh, say that this is the parent cell so the daughter cells will be identical to the parent cells understand that <clears throat> so understand this in that basically in mitosis the parent cell has splitted into two and the uh, daughter cells are identical to the parents right now okay now other type of division is called as meiosis so in this meiosis now basically what happens the parent cell will split first into two daughter cells and then further those cells will also uh, replicate so if you were to talk about the cells that will be dividing in muscles in our muscles right now or for example bone cells hair cells uh, or uh, <coughs> uh, nerve cells for example so the cells found in these body parts i have just taken few examples there will be certain other parts in the body also they will be dividing via the mitosis method okay abu so far is it clear yes sir not talking about um cells like the sperm cells or the ovum cells okay now only the ovum ovum uh, o v u m c <laughs> sperm cells and the ovum cells the sperm cells in the male and the ovum cells in the female so these are released by the reproductive organs of the male and the female body so see sir, in this yes sir uh, the egg cell and ovum cell is the same thing right ha huh, exactly both are same thing both are same thing ovum cells or whether you call them as egg cells both are same thing good so see in this what will happen let's take a cell it might be a sperm cell or ovum cell so first of all it will start to replicate its content okay first of all right now and then it will divide first into two daughter cells like this <clears throat> so this is not dividing over here like this and further again these cells will now again divide look over here <clears throat> so initially you had one parent and now at the last stage there are four cells and these are called as daughter cells so you have four daughter cells okay now four daughter cells are there and here you had two daughter cells so keep this one in mind that in meiosis the parent cell will divide into four daughter cells okay now uh, also uh, if i were to further elaborate it now you get to see that <coughs> in the human body now okay let me just erase this one in higher classes you will get to know that uh, there is a thing called as chromosomes that are found inside the dna inside the nucleus and inside the dna they are um, uh, inside the nucleus basically chromosomes are found and in each cell chromosomes are found in 46 numbers they are found 46 in numbers okay so understand this thing here that in uh, meiosis now what happens look here when you talk about mitosis the parent cell will also be having 46 chromosomes while the daughter cells will also be having 46 chromosomes in them but when you talk about meiosis now in which sperm and egg cells are being produced here so when you get to see that 
uh, that they will be having only 23 chromosomes. They will be having only 23 chromosomes. In them. So do note that thing as well. Okay, if anyways, if like it's going over the head, then you can just leave it. Just know that in meiosis, parent cell will be dividing into four uh, daughter cells, while in mitosis, two daughter cells will be formed and they will be identical to each other. Okay, hope that much is clear. Yes, if there's any confusion in it, please do let me know. Okay, we have a few time remaining over here. Yes. Sir, what is the difference uh, 